Hey guys, Peter Steele here, back with another video, and this is what you've been waiting for, achievement guides. Today we are going for the Romanovs' last laugh, so let's go. 1936 as the Soviet Union, but not for long. What will we be doing? Well, we will need to restore the Romanovs to the throne and conquer Germany, Hungary, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Turkey, and Bulgaria. So the old central powers. Sounds like a tall order, so let's get going. Of course, we'll leave Iron Man mode on, obviously, and historical AI focuses because the game will be weird enough. Ah, the beautiful, beautiful Soviet Union. That beautiful mustache. I'm gonna close that for a bit because we don't need to look at that just yet. Research, I'm gonna start with the basics. Engineering, production, construction. Speaking of construction, I'm gonna build two civilian factories all the way over here in Chita. You, you'll you'll see why soon enough and then I'm gonna follow that up with a couple of railways We have plans and those plans require supplies for one I'm going to upgrade these two tiles to level two. These are the only level one connections between Moscow and uh, The Georgian supply hubs and we'll need supply here to take Turkey I am tempted to do the same between the Venezia node and Moscow so upgrading all these to level three uh, what that would do is allow for much better supply throughput on the border with Romania. Uh, then again, it's a lot of construction time that we might be wasting, but I just want to see if it works out. And after all those are built, we'll build the two civilian factories that I queued up first. And I'm following that up with railways between... Where are we here? Chita and Novosibirsk, all up to level three because this is the Trans-Siberian Railway and this is going to be the axis of advance in the Civil War. Civil War, you ask? Well, you'll see. Military factories, uh, 10 on guns, three on support, three on artillery, 10 on light tanks, and everything else on fighters and I'll delete the bombers. We, we need to choose what to do here. As for the Navy, you can delete this if you want to. I am just gonna let these guys build and I'm actually gonna deploy them in the Black Seas fleet because if we're gonna take out Turkey early I can take the Black Seas fleet out and they'll help with naval bombardment in the region meanwhile and now for the annoying part setting up the army I'm quickly gonna do this off screen because it's really annoying ah that's much better so what I've done is I've organized all the tanks and the one truck division in an army under Zukov I've moved all the NKVD troops into their own little army and parked them in Stalingrad Leningrad and Moscow I'll not use these for combat. They're garbage and I can't do anything with them. I wish I could delete them. I've converted all the cavalry into infantry and then separated my infantry under a field marshal, Tukachevsky, and gave them all the best offensive generals I could find. And of course, I've got all of the mountaineers here as well. Mountaineers are concentrated on the Turkish border along with a single army and the rest of the troops are on the Romanian border. Now, we're not gonna take a focus for a little while until we have 50 political power. With that 50 political power, we are going to immediately justify on Turkey and get our hands on that sweet, sweet Bosporus. It's the easiest way to deal with Turkey. This is before they pick up any guarantees for major powers. This way, we just have to fight Turkey and Romania. Both are ridiculously easy to fight. If we wait too long, they'll pick up Axis and Allied guarantees, and it just becomes a headache. With Turkey under our control, all we'll need is Bulgaria, Hungary, Prague, Austria, and Berlin here. And that just means fighting the Axis. I mean, Germany is going to eat Austria and the Czechs anyway. Hungary is going to join the Axis, as is Bulgaria, and we will steamroll them from the east after stopping their initial Barbarossa advance. At least that is the plan, so let's go. I'm also going to start exercising the army until they're all level 3. Uh, it just gives us a little bit of an edge when we do push into Romania. Yeah, our equipment's not looking too great, but don't worry about it, we'll be fine. Alright, 50 political power, let's kick things off. Now do note, uh, we're about to make the world go insane. Uh, what is going to happen now is we are going to spike world tension early, not only through our wars with Romania and Turkey and the peace deals, but also with our civil war. Oops, I forgot I should now pick a focus as well. And we will go for beaten but not defeated. Yeah, that's uh, my bad. Oh, right, Air Force. I've consolidated all my airplanes here. I'm going to use half my fighters over Romania and I'll use the other half of my fighters, of course, over Turkey. Should be easy peasy dealing with the Soviet Air Force as well as our, what is this, tactical bombers. We'll use those to bomb the crap out of 
the Romanians. Speaking of Black Sea, Black Sea's fleet give command to Philip Octiab, this guy with a ground pounder, and he will be invading, well, providing naval invasion support in the Black Sea. This will make it a lot easier to, one, naval invade, and two, provide some nice shore bombardment bonuses. All right, beaten but not defeated is done. Now we continue down here. Uh, first order of business is taking unification of the exiles all the way down to embrace the Black Hundreds. We only need one of these three to start with, and I like taking national unification first. So unification of the exiles, national unification, and then Black Hundreds. And that'll be our first three focuses. And Stalin is concerned as well he should be. We're planning to replace him. Now, this activates the paranoia mechanics. Don't worry about these too much. You'll need to worry about it more if you're playing one of the Soviet paths as the White Army. It's, it's pretty okay. Just make sure his paranoia never goes over 90% and you'll be good. It doesn't matter who he purges because no one, none of those people are gonna back us Anyway, if he kills generals, that's fine. To his generals, we don't get any of them at the start of the civil war. The only exceptions would be uh, try to keep people like Tukhachevsky, Konyev, Zukov alive because they're very good generals. The AI doesn't know how to use them anyway against you in the civil war, but you do have the opportunity to have them defect to you later. So don't kill them too soon if you can avoid it. Uh, we do have some options to deal with his political paranoia, but I wouldn't worry about these too much, like I said, unless his paranoia starts to climb to dangerous levels. Dangerous being anything over 90% because that gives him a daily 20% chance of finding out about us and crushing us. All right, Turkey does its thing. Always mobilize the armed forces. It's a free 5% war support. Unfortunately, that is still not 50% war support. So I'm going to bank political power to go up to a partial mobilization. If I could find 2% war support on the cheap somewhere, we could get war economy. God, these national spirits are terrible. Oh, this country's a mess, Stalin. Whoever put you in charge was an idiot. Construction is coming along nicely. Our railways are being built. So yeah, you can see here, Romania, uh, a lot of troops on that front. This is why I jacked up the railway all the way from Moscow to the local supply hubs, just to make sure we can take Romania without too many difficulties. And we've got time still. All right, basic machine tools done. I like to go for dispersed industry. A couple of reasons. One is it's harder to bomb. And two is you start out with a higher efficiency base and you have more retention, meaning you lose less when you swap over equipment, which you will be doing for a long game. Plus, we have a lot of factories. So I think this is best. Not to mention that you'll be stuck with this spirit. This absolutely destroys any efficiency growth you have. So you don't want to lose too much of it every time you switch over. So the higher your base and the higher your retention, the less terrible the effects of the five-year plan and its uh, where are we? And its various successors are. So one theme is that uh, yeah, they don't like you having a lot of production growth. Right, Stalin's paranoia. Okay, political paranoia is gonna go up. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Like I said, it doesn't matter who he purchased, what he purchased. He's just ruining his own country. We don't have to worry about this when we break away from him. So every time you get one of these events, just pick the top option. Whichever makes his paranoia go down, it's fine. It also improves support for whatever army branch he's messing with. So in this case, the Navy. Their support for the opposition will increase, which you can see here. The Army, Navy and Air Force have varying levels of support for our cause, meaning when we rise up, that percentage of the Army, Navy and Air Force comes with us. So you want this to be high, you want Stalin to piss off his own troops. Caught up with the industry now. Uh, I could get mechanical computing, but I want the guns first. So basic infantry equipment just for our initial wars with Turkey and Romania. They won't be a challenge, but this just makes it a little bit easier. Alternatively, you could go for mechanical computing. You could go for the artillery or if you like uh, tanks, you could start work on medium tanks. I found medium tanks to be just a tad better than lights. There we go. The black hundreds. Now scroll back to Cheetah. You can see an orange. It's outlining the territory we'll keep. Let's expand that territory. The black hundreds activates these on map decisions. They are very much like the Spanish Civil War decisions in that you need to prepare the terrain before the war fires so you have control of it. Stalin is going to do the same thing in Siberia uh, but you won't have to fight over the same territory. If you've taken it he can't take it from you and vice versa. So what you want to do is rush towards Vladivostok first so you can control this side. It has a good amount of resources and after that you want to rush all provinces along here until you get to Novosibirsk. 
Novosibirsk because this is where the Trans-Siberian Railway is. This is going to be the heart of your advance. Without the railway, you're not going anywhere either. Once you've reached Novosibirsk, you can look into taking some of these bigger provinces in northern Siberia just to make your front line a little bit cleaner. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be really long. Stalin's paranoia is getting high, 54%. I could forge production reports. It would cut off 20 in exchange for 2% consumer goods. Not terrible. Only do this one every 180 days, though. Or I could wait another 51 days and he's going to do a big purge. That will cut down his uh, political paranoia by a lot as well. I'll just keep an eye on this for a while. All right, Article 124 is done. Now, what do we do next? First, I take covert operations. One, it gives me 35 political power, which is cool. And it unlocks a couple of decisions to frame some people, diverting Stalin's attention. Very helpful for helping him to piss off the army, helping him to give the army to me. Uh, after that, I will muster the old guard and approach Semyonov. Not because it's particularly handy to recruit extra cavalry divisions, but he is a fairly good general, especially because we don't start with any generals. Ironically, all we get is field marshals, oddly enough. And we've done covert operations, mustering the old guard next, and that gives us options to frame an army officer or an admiral. One of those two, or both, they're actually quite helpful. Um, they stage the purge of an admiral, field marshal, or an, just a, a general. But in exchange, of course, Stalin's paranoia goes down, which is nice, but it also makes support in the army or navy go up for us, which is very nice. I want Stalin to really bleed his army. That's the first Moscow trial and his paranoia has dropped significantly. Let's drop it a little more by framing an army officer. Got our air force up, got the navy deployed and the army is in position. So all we have to do now is declare war on Turkey. I'm going to immediately start an initial assault by taking the mountaineers here and attacking in the, this tile and pushing one tile south and to take the mountaineers on this side, pushing to Kars and the tile south of that. No wait, west of that. Of course, support these attacks with the rest of the infantry. Now, if these go well, we'll immediately encircle the units here, who I will be pinning. So we'll immediately encircle six divisions. Now, of course, you manage your war the way you want to, doesn't really matter. As for Romania, Romania really is the challenge. I'm gonna take my armor and smash through and I'm gonna take my field marshal order, give them hold shift, click this and then click the big field marshal order and only this order will activate and not this one. And that way the infantry can just start attacking all over the place and they can do so aggressively. Romania doesn't have the manpower or the equipment to resist us for long. Yes, it's gonna hurt us, but it's gonna hurt Romania a lot more. Trust me. And I want to break this tile quickly before the enemy is able to reinforce it with uh, some support units. Anyway, now to micromanage three things. God, I hate this. I'm not going to walk you through this entirely, but for the war in Turkey, what you want to do is encircle as many Turkish divisions as you can and exploit every gap in the line immediately. Just make the front line as big as possible. Why? Because Turkey doesn't really have that many divisions. It looks like a lot, but it's really not compared to the Red Army. Just stretch their lines to the breaking point and keep attacking. As for Romania, what you want to do here is punch through Shiznau, this place here, across the river. And let's open the supply map mode. You want to approach along the railway, split half of your fast units to the north, take that hub, cut off the entire section here, and then rush south towards Bucharest. It's mostly planes, so your tanks should be able to do well. Oh, this sucks so much having to constantly pan between Siberia and Romania. We've got 14 days to wage war, so in 14 days, about the 30th or 29th, I need to look back. No, wait, 27th. Rule of thumb seems to be, for me at least, uh, attack along the railway. Take the supply hubs and the enemy crumbles. Oh, these encirclements are too good to be true. Well, we've pushed them one tile and suddenly we find ourselves surrounded with open tiles. Of course, what we do is exploit those. Definitely should not just be destroying these units. I'm gonna delete these front lines. I'm gonna redraw them. Uh, I'm gonna keep those units bottled up while I march into the rest of Romania to try and capitulate them quickly because I think, I'm not sure, but I think I should still be able to just take all of their supply this way. I'm gonna pin these divisions and make use of the gap here 
to walk into that division. Just keep making the front line bigger. Got our first encirclement here as well. That is six divisions encircled. Now, I could keep them bottled up, but there's a whole lot of Turkey we still need to conquer. So I'm just going to destroy these divisions so I can keep moving forward. It's going to be annoying enough without having to worry about that kind of memory. And now it's the 27th. That means a new decision. Yes. All right, we're still on the move. Everything's going well, but Stalin is also cracking down in Siberia. So let's keep our fingers crossed that he doesn't take one of the provinces along the Siberian railway. If he does, we'll need to adjust our schedule. Uh, if he doesn't, we'll be fine. We'll just engulf that province with our own and it should be no concern. That uh, gives us another 14 days to keep playing the fun part of the game. Yeah, Romania is pretty much defeated. Uh, I think I'll need Dobrich, Constanta and maybe Alba here. That should be it. Unless I also need Chloe up there. And we just keep expanding the front line here. Take every little bit of land we can. Keep pinning the enemy in place so they can't redeploy to stop us. And if we're lucky, we might actually be able to cut towards Batman <laughs> and cut this entire section off. Romania should cap the next victory point. So I'm going to halt. I don't want to crush these pockets. I really don't. I might be able to get their equipment if they give up. So I'm just going to drive the Timisoara. That should give me what I need. Back to Siberia. I'm going to need to do this all the time. So I'm going to be cutting a lot of it. Romania is almost gone. Also, almost cut Turkey in half. That's nice. All right, Romania is gone. We got a couple of guns out of them. Good thing that we didn't crush those pockets. Now, what do I want to do here? Um, two ways to handle this. Ideally, I'd puppet them. However, puppeting is broken with the way the Russian Civil War works. Don't. Just, just don't until they patch it. Currently, if you puppet them, they still side with Stalin. And at the end of the Civil War, they become free and still at war with you. They're still easily crushed, but it's going to make world tension spike even more. And it leads to weirdness. Uh, what I just like to do is just take all states except for Dobruja. Uh, that means they can still interact with Hungary for their Treaty of Trianon. And if you're lucky, that way you'll still be able to justify on a newly fascist Hungary that doesn't have any friends and is still free real estate. So that is what I'm going to do. Well, now it's just a matter of redeploying all those Romanian troops to the Turkish border here and just sweep them away. Uh, what I like to do is set up a bit of a naval invasion with the armor. Yes, I know that armor is really, really not uh, ideal for naval invasions. But by this point, Turkey should really be pulling most of its troops away from the ports and towards that new massive front line we've created because they just don't have enough units to man all of it and they're panicking. All this infantry grinding is not terrible per se because uh, early game army experience really is very important. Um, God, this front line's just wacky. All right, we've got a bit of army XP that we can spend and we can take a look at the officer corps. Uh, Air Force, good amount of air XP. Spirit of the Air Force, which we like. If you want to research airplanes, Industry liaisons, pretty good. Independent Air Force, not bad if you want some advisors to hire. And then for Army Command, uh, Spirit of the Academy, this influences our generals. So I'm thinking the Queen of Battle. This improves infantry leader traits and we will be using a lot of infantry as the Russians. Or I could save up a little bit more and get a Spirit of the Army. And there's some good stuff in here like bayonet strength, giving your infantry 10% more XP gain from combat and most of our army is infantry, or even professional army corps just giving you a flat 5% army XP gain and more daily command power, plus cheaper land doctrine. Like, oh, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I don't actually hate mass assault doctrine. It's actually reasonably okay, mostly because of all the supply consumption reduction in there. All right, our tanks are in position and the invasion is prepared. Let's take a look here. I'm going to select my submarines, take them off naval invasion support and sail up to the sea tile next to these ports uh, just to have a sneak peek at the coast. And it looks like this coast is clear. They don't have any units on the ports. So I'm going to launch my naval invasion and we should have a clear run towards Ankara. Yeah, I think most of the Turkish army is like here. <laughs> Now, there is a bit of a bug here in regards to supply. It says there are no convoys with access and there is no supply coming in. I have no idea why. I control the Black Sea. I have enough convoys. I have a port here in Crimea with access to my capital, but no supply can reach this place. 
don't know why. Legitimately don't know. I'm guessing it's bugged. Yeah, Turkey's Turkey's out. They're, they've got at most 26 units against the might of the Red Army. That's not going to do much. Okay, once I've taken Novosibirsk, I'm going to work my way up to here, this province, and then the one above that. And then I'm going to close the hinterlands here in, in the parts of Siberia that don't really matter, but just make for cleaner borders. That's going to just make it easier to see where we're going. Uh, looks like we've got a bunch of divisions encircled here, so I'm not going to close this. I'm just going to encircle them, leave them trapped here. And like Romania, I might be able to steal some of their equipment when we capitulate them because I am going to need a lot of equipment. Oh, Turkey, just give up. It's over. It's over. All right, I've won. Ah, there we go. Good amount of equipment. Well, decent amount of equipment. And now, two ways to handle Turkey. If you don't want to spike world tension, you simply take Ankara and don't touch the rest. You only need to control Ankara for the achievement. However, that makes one ridiculously ugly borders and two, it makes it pretty unpredictable what the Turks are gonna do. They might decide they want their country back. So what I just do now is take all states. Now with that done, we just need to wait for the civil war. And to do that, I just spread my army out a little uh, to avoid taking too much attrition. I'll just put an army on Poland, put an army on Iran. Let's put half an army on Latvia and the other half on Estonia. And I can put one more army up here near Leningrad and uh, should be fine. As for the mountaineers, I simply delete the mountaineers. Uh, mostly because that way the equipment goes back into my garrisons and fills out the rest of my divisions. Alright, Semyonov approached. What can we do now? Uh, South Manchuria Railway is vital. Otherwise your supply hub will not actually be connected to the railway in Siberia. Don't, don't ask me how I know, but I know. Tolkachi is also incredibly important because it allows you to get some equipment at the start. Very helpful. And we'll need one of these, either the True Tsars or the Women's Fascist Movement to actually be able to do the Eye Sphere. We need the support. I'd like to check what Stalin's doing. Right, Parnoi is not that high. So I am going to get the railway first. After we have the railway, just pick Tolkachi or the True Tsars. The um, order doesn't matter. And then take the Eye Sphere. Oh, now that Semyonov has been recruited, we have the option to hire Siberian cavalry divisions or even Manchurian cavalry divisions uh, at the cost of 10 command power and 5 political paranoia. What this does is spawn, I think, one cavalry division. Yeah, really, really cheap cavalry division at the start of the Civil War. It could be useful. Like, for instance, if Stalin takes control of this state that I'm working on now, and you have all the outlying states. What you could do is just like spawn a cavalry division next to a state that Stalin has asserted control over and just you'll have a cavalry division right there to quickly mop up and delete it afterwards. Uh, I wouldn't recruit those for the sake of a frontline unit of any sorts though. They're just not that good. Ah, we've got our basic medium tanks researched. Uh, should probably get the armor as well, but I'm not going to design any tanks just yet. We've got a civil war upcoming. Look at that. 40% of the navy is with me, 30% of the army, 27% of the air force. You've not been running your country very well, Stalin. It's finally realized there's disloyalty in the NKVD. All right. That's the only way, by the way, to replace this guy ahead uh, of the NKVD uh, through these events. They seem kind of random, but... If you're playing Stalin, you'll probably have ways to influence it. Anyway, time to yeet that man. Bye bye. And now it's Yezov time. Uh, looking at the map, we are controlling a good amount of territory. I don't want to take more. I could. I really could. But I don't think I have to. I'd rather hold on to the political power. Because when we do go to war, I can ramp up the war economy. There we go. The hands do. To arms, the second Russian civil war. Now, don't be too intimidated. This is relatively easy. Ah, there we go. The provisional Russian government is victorious. I even had some stuff left. So yeah, not the world's most difficult civil war if you prepare for it properly. With that done, we are once again in control of all of our territories. Um, let's see how poorly Stalin managed everything. So that's bad. Now all that's left is to mop up these tiny, tiny republics. Should be relatively easy. They have virtually no strength compared to us. As for focuses, I recommend we go for consolidate power and rebuild the nation. Uh, this one starts getting your stability up, which is great. And this one gives you less consumer goods, which is also great. And it automatically repairs all of your stuff 25% faster. Yeah, you're, you're gonna need that because um, let me tell you, uh, you got a lot of 
A lot, lot of broken stuff here. Yeah. As for construction, we've got enough military factories. I'm going to start jacking up our civilian economy because we are lagging behind severely in that department. All right, that's the first of the enemy republics. Take them all. And that leaves us with Karelia. I'm going to park this army where I want them. Obviously, we're going to set up on the old Dnieper line because I know Germany's coming and I don't know if I'll be able to build enough troops in time to uh, fight them at the Polish border. Speaking of fighting the Axis on the Dnieper, my Field Marshal here, Konstantin, I have given him Defensive Doctrine. He is now also level 4, which means he can take an Officer Corps role, and I've given him Entrenchment Specialist. That is going to come in helpful when I assign him at Chief of the Army, where he now gives me a little bit of daily army experience, which is great, but not fantastic but he gives our entire army three percent extra entrenchment and that is going to be helpful when sitting behind the Dnieper at least that's what I think I'm going to start hoarding political power once again though because this focus hides some really good advisors and to prepare we are going to boost our economy we'll keep building civilian factories until mm, early 39 ish and then we'll switch over to military factories we're also going to start upgrading our railway network to improve the connections here with the uh the Dnieper line which means we need to bypass a couple of provinces that will be cut off and we'll build a couple of fresh supply hubs on the right side of the river. As you can see, the one in Kiev is going to be taken. So I'll build another one here in Zafrosia. No, that's not Kiev. Dnipropetrovsk. The one in Kiev here is also on the wrong side. So I'll build one on the right side of the river. And if there's time, I might build an extra supply hub here. But I don't think I need to. Other than that, mostly going to be upgrading my railways leading to the supply hubs and the rest of the front line. Upgrade them to like level 3. I know it's pretty expensive, but I think it's worth it. Actually, with this whole thing behind us, uh, in hindsight, I think I made a mistake by going Mass Assault Doctrine. Probably be better off either going Grand Battle Plan if we intend to stage a very defensive war, or just go with superior firepower. This is still the king of doctrines, at least that's what I think. Unfortunately, I've got more bugs. Uh, I cannot assign an infantry specialist. The button doesn't work, and it doesn't work on any of my generals, so uh, yeah. A little annoying. Ah, oh, well, it is what it is. I'm gonna wait with building too many tanks, though. I need other stuff first, such as anti-air. Trust me, you are going to want anti-air. And fighters. Again, trust me, you're gonna want fighters. The AI is very, very aggressive. And when all that is fulfilled, we can look into getting some medium tanks to replace our lights. First, of course, we need to rebuild this country. Let's get going. And speaking of rebuilding this country, I'll now pick up Rebuild the Nation. Gives us a good national spirit. Then we'll work down to the Declaration. So the Synod, the Declaration. After that, we'll switch over to the industry side of things. We're also going to recruit as much infantry as possible. We need at least a full army group on the Dnieper line, preferably more. And while tanks are our heavy hitters and they will bring us victory in the end, we need the infantry to survive initial contact with the German army. And with our declaration done, we could head down further towards the Romanov reconstruction and reconvene the Zemsky Sobor. These are good national spirits. We also need these to get ourselves the Tsar. However, we can get the Tsar later while we're at war. War. What we can't get at war is the five-year plan bonuses, so we'll get these. Infrastructure effort, abolish the five-year plan, the new project, and then we'll pick reorganize the Ministry of Industry, steel casting industry, and industrial modernization. You could go right side, but currently armaments production and optimized production lines are bugged. They don't actually improve the new project. They actually approve the five-year plan, the Soviet version. And as a result, if you take this focus, you end up with two five-year plans, completely wrecking your economy. So let's stick with the left side. Uh, if, if they ever fix this bug, the right side is probably better though. All right, Hungary renounces Trianon, and in any other game, they will be free real estate, invade, puppet them, and be done with it. Unfortunately, with world tension being as high as it is, I can guarantee you the second you declare war on Hungary, they will join the Axis, and you're gonna have a bad day, because you'll be fighting Germany long before you're ready. 
you want to give this a try, be my guest. We're not going to because I know how it's going to play out. So build up your industry, build up your army and just stall for time. The reason why I'm going against older methods of playing Russia compared to with no step back is because Cass is incredibly powerful in this current patch. So you need something for the air. All right, Japan, unacceptable. Okay, Japan's going to do its thing on the border. I am going to just deploy six divisions there. Should be fine. Don't even need to give them a general. They'll get one through the event reason I'm even bothering with these guys oh there goes Greece reason I'm even bothering with this is because the event here just gives you a pretty good bonus to doctrine and you'd be stupid not to take it oh before I forget we have the political power we get that new industrial concern the the the, the construction company it's fun about this one is now that we've assigned it it does give us a bunch of construction bonuses but it also allows us to improve it some more by bringing in foreign experts Germany for growth Britain for retention and lack of resources penalty Japan for for efficiency base and America for production efficiency cap. I think I want to buddy up with Japan because higher efficiency base is good the moment we start pumping out military factories, which we will. It's January. I'm going to finish off the things we're building and then I'm going to switch into military factories and of course, fuck ton of uh, railways. And to try it out, I'm going to build a radar station here in Chernigov to help out in Kiev because I've noticed that Germany just goes ham for this region and if our air force can actually muster some sort of defense it might help but more importantly we need a lot of factories just build them in your highest infrastructure provinces and hope you get enough of them by the time germany comes knocking oh well that was easy japanese defeat and we've got a 35 percent bonus for land doctrine can immediately use that to get rid of mass assaults so either we get Grand Battle Plan, this will definitely help us dig in and fortify at the Dnieper line, or we get Superior Firepower, which in the long run will end up being better. Even if we use tanks, Mobile Warfare is good, but even if we use tanks, Superior Firepower is still numerically better. And for some reason, uh, we, we still get offered the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. I'm pretty sure we shot Molotov about a year ago. Oh well, uh, it's a free non-aggression pact with Germany, so... Why not? This actually just... Okay, so we've got the research slot time for industrialization. So the new project, reorganize the ministry, steel casting industry, industrial modernization. And after that, we turn to the army and get rid of rehabilitated military and military reorganization. We have a lot of work ahead of us and we have about a year to do it before Germany comes knocking. And now we've got the Japanese experts, we have one more level of upgrades to do. We can either specialize in civilian industry, pretty good if you get this early on. Uh, consumer goods are nice, but I think we want to specialize in military industry, more factory output and more construction speed for mills, which is what we're pumping out right now. And with war about a year off, it's time we hired some specialists. Um, I'd very much like Gorky Zukov. Oh no, wait, no, I don't. <laughs> I very much wish I had a land doctrine theorist. We don't, which sucks. Uh, and Instead, I'll just get the air superiority expert, I think, or maybe an aircraft designer. Might save up for the aircraft designer. That is going to be helpful once we uh, start chucking these new planes out. Then again, I also need 150 PP to go up a conscription law because as Russia, I've run out of manpower. So with one full army group on the Dnieper line, we've got a couple of guys left. Uh, I plan to use these to hold on to Turkey. I could just set up a defense here in the Caucasus Mountains, but it's going to be easier if we just set up on Istanbul and then defend the Turkish ports. I think that is going to require a lot less manpower. And why is this front line broken? Now that I am putting men here, though, I'll also need to fix this railway system. Oh, Turkey starts with such a broken railway network. Okay, I'm going to take my research off the fighters i need a little bit more political power before i can get the design company for them and i'd much rather have that than not have that and i'll just assign this slot to something industrially focused i've got a big bonus coming for dispersed industry so i don't want to waste it on that let's just pick up computing machine okay it's time we added some support aa and engineer companies now i do hope we have enough equipment oh we don't nearly have enough equipment oh well now, if you want to buy time, about six months more, you can just stack your troops on this border and Germany will need to go 200% of your division count to break the pact. It is risky though, because while you retreat, Germany will declare and you'll not be able to build up a proper entrenchment bonus on the Dnieper line. 
but it might be worth it if you need more time. Okay, I'm gonna pick up the airplane design company for fighters. Might be a gigantic mistake, but... And with that, we've worked our way through the industrial tree. We got what we wanted, but we know that Germany is coming soon, so we need to get rehabilitated military and military reorganization. Well, Germany is justifying on us, and they will be able to break the pack next month, unless we keep our troops here to extend it a little bit. So I think we're gonna do that. Rehabilitated military, military reorganization. Experts in camouflage is also gonna be handy to fend off German cast and the initial assault. After that, we'll rebuild the Savior Cathedral and get our ourselves a czar, I think. It does look like most of our railways are built. Uh, I've got more factories queued up, of course. I am gonna build, and this may be a mistake, but I wanna try it. I wanna build some radar stations in the regions directly around the front, just to have a better shot at shooting down enemy German airplanes. Radar is very impactful in air combat, and they've just made it better with how important airplanes actually are now in this patch. Okay, we've got our military reorganization. We're getting experts in camouflage. When this one's about to finish, I'm gonna pull all these troops off the line. And after my army has passed, we're gonna blow everything behind us. We're gonna use scorched earth to blow up every province behind us. This will disable the railway system in those provinces and significantly slow down the German troops as they try to chase after us. We've also got a reserve army out. I'm gonna use that to cover the Crimean flank. Hopefully that'll ease some of the pressure off the main line. All right, experts in camouflage is done. I'm pulling the entire Russian army back to the Dnieper line. If Germany declares on us, I'll simply put some scorched earth on the railways behind us. That will slow them down. Let's hope. Yeah, Germany cancels. Fortunately, most of our boys are really hurrying along to their positions. Like with the railway, it's incredibly fast to redeploy. Oh, there we go. Germany breaks the pact as expected. And now to burn a little bit of political power blowing up the railways as we go. Looks like Britain's done me a solid in taking these islands, so I think I can pull a couple of troops off this line. All right, Italy, everybody's joining, already slamming into my fronts, but that's good, I can, I can hold that easily. I wonder if I can hold Istanbul or if I should just fall back. Eh, we'll see, it doesn't really matter. Oof, that German stain spreading. I have no idea how combat works now. I did not see the gigantic buff in cast coming, and I've noticed in test runs that it's absolutely devastating. So my plan is to hold the Stalin line. We should just call up the provisional government line now and bleed the Germans dry. They shouldn't be able to take Istanbul though, so if Turkey's secure, that's one thing. Still, I think if we survive initial contact and our fighters don't melt, we should should be able to do well here. Not even trading all that favorably, but we'll see how this goes when they make contact with our lines. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. It does seem like these guys are out of equipment, or at least out of supply. Ah, uh, they're probably just on the border of the range of the supply hub, and it's not quite reaching. Oh, the air war is gonna be tight here. They have a lot of airplanes. A lot of airplanes, and they're better than mine. No, it seems we're holding fairly well. It is a very, very fortified line after all. Uh, this province is always a bit of annoying. Yeah, it can be attacked from so many different sides. We'll see how long it holds. I'll, I'll reinforce it with tanks from behind. So I've split my tank core between a northern section, a central section and a southern section behind the front line. And the idea is just to drive a tank into any tile that's losing just to ease pressure off. Tanks should do a little better at holding off the enemy. Oh, these guys are under a lot of pressure. And even with their massive entrench, oh, massive, 58%, it's not that bad. Very high defense and we're still getting shredded. Still, it looks mostly green. I said that, and now some turned yellow. Hmm. You'll also notice the Germans bringing up their railway artillery by these icons. They tend to go ham for railway guns. I don't know why, the AI really likes them as Germany. They should not prove too difficult, but just be aware you might need to micromanage this defense at least a little bit. For now, we're holding. Let's keep this going. Bleed the Germans dry. We are doing reasonably okay in the air war. Some of these divisions are getting frighteningly low though. They can even pierce all of my armor divisions. That's a Hungarian one doing the piercing as well. They must have some AT in there. And we've lost the tile. What's to be expected? Oh well, it's just one tile. I'm gonna redeploy now though, make an actual frontline order, and we should be able to hold. And even if we get pushed a tile, maybe even two, we should be bleeding the Germans at this point. Let's see, they've taken 230k casualties. We have lost, 
yeah, uh, 10 to 1 casualties seems pretty fair. Let's make some ambitious counterattacks. Or at least plan for some ambitious counterattacks. Still, most bubbles are green. I'm feeling confident. <sighs> Every time I say that, you know, it's just... Not gonna lie, but cheeks are pretty clenched right now. Oh, 150 PP. As you can see, stability's a little low. It won't always be this low, but we got a little unlucky with a couple of ticks. Usually, you should be higher than this. But if you're not, again, it's an easy way to get stability up. You either hire the Patriarch of Moscow and all Russia. He's a pretty good pick. Or we hire... No, we don't hire. We take the focus, rebuild the Savior Cathedral. That's another 10% stability. Easy choice right there. I think right now the Patriarch of Moscow could come to our aid. Nice amount of stability and some division recovery rate. That is going to be helpful. Oh, we're not trading favorably at all. They've shot me down almost two to one. So that's bad. How is our supply looking? We've got plenty of trains, though maybe I should start up a production line of trains. I am close to the mark. Wonder what the German railway gun's hiding. Probably around here. I wanna go and steal it, but I need to bleed them a little more first. Oh boy, my airplanes are uh, really melting. I'm already down almost a thousand fighters. Yeah, that's gonna suck. There are too many Luftwaffels here. They'll run out of men eventually though. We're still dealing almost 10 to 1 casualties. As our doctrines go up, we should do a lot more damage as well to the enemy air force. Definitely get multi-altitude flying as fast as possible. That is life or death. We've already dealt with a lot of the negatives from the Russian Air Force, the negative spirit. I could still pick up women in aviation and expand aviation institutes to really get rid of it. That'll be it, I think, for the Air Force. Um, I need to look into desperate measures as well, because that leads to lessons of war. Oh, that's actually a lot better. You know what? I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to get lessons of war here. That is a lot better. Desperate measures, lessons of war. Sorry about that. I... I completely glossed over this. Like I said, this is all very new to me still. I think we're starting to hurt the Germans in the air now. If we can just keep this going, we should be fine. Now that is to say, I, I did build up a couple of radar stations in the area and that should help. I mean, that definitely helps in the air war. So I got uh, two in Zafrosia, uh, two in Chernigov and Gomel, and one up here in Neville. So, you know, air, pretty reliant on radar. Uh, sure, Japan, peace for now. I don't want to deal with you as well. Surely, Germany must be running out of steam by now. It's been a year of fruitless assaults upon the Stalin... Well, not the Stalin line. I've killed 1.8 million Russians. I've lost 170k, so we're doing very, very well. I should probably start organizing my tank battalions for a strike back. Well, I can safely say the butt clenching is over at this point. Uh, Germany's defeated. All we need to do is launch our counterattack. We are taking down their fighters at alarming rate. Now that we've got multi-altitude flight, our doctrine's coming along nicely. I think Germany is down for the count. At least they will be when we launch our counter-offensive. Oh yeah, we're trading very favorably in the sky now. The Luftwaffe's days are numbered. Now with the pressure off my lines, I'm gonna organize my tanks to start a little bit of pushing back. Ideally, I'd find a place like Kiev, a major railway hub, to strike at first, but the river crossing is pretty fierce, uh, so we'll need to try maybe break out from the Vitebsk gate. We'll see what happens when we try our first clap back. Ah, uh, striking back seems relatively easy at this point. So this is where the armor finally comes into play. We start taking the railroads and the hubs and uh, launch our first offensives. Just push the Germans out of the supply regions. Don't go for the classic encirclements. That doesn't really work quite as well as it did before. So from this point forward, we are the aggressors and we're gonna start cutting them to ribbons. Ah, of course it doesn't help that I'm fighting in absolutely disgusting terrain. My bad. Annoyingly, they keep reinforcing this tile of Minsk from the rear. I'm pinning it to the sides, but uh, I keep finding more troops to the rear to reinforce. But it does look like they're finally breaking. Oh, having said that, I just funneled another six divisions in from the rear. Now you can see the supply system at work here. We're at the very edge of our supply lines. We need to draw supply from, what is this, Vitebsk? And we're at the very edge of our supply lines, while Germany is fighting on Minsk and is well supplied. As a result, we're really not getting anywhere and it doesn't help that the AI is very, very aggressive well, or defensive and trying to hold on to 
with supply lines. It is literally pulling troops from all over the front away to try and reinforce Minsk at this time. I've pulled my tanks out, let them recover. They got a little bit of supply to get going. Put them back into service and we're going to try a different approach. Kiev, or well, Minsk is overstacked. Let's go for Bobruisk and push south. There's another supply node here. If we catch that, that's also good. And again, keep pinning divisions just to give your units time to actually get some stuff done. Now, this isn't ideal terrain to fight in with tanks. This is marshes, so eee, quite nasty, but can't always pick the terrain you fight in. Yeah, fighting in marshes is probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. I, I can't break this. I gotta give it to him, the AI is a lot smarter than it used to be. It knows where to defend and how to defend it. It's getting a little frustrating though that the, the core feature of this DLC, tanks, are, I wouldn't say virtually useless, but they're not nearly as good as they should be. My armor is like literally useless right now. Uh, it's probably a supply issue, but just looking at the stats, they cannot be pierced. Well, mostly cannot be pierced, but they're just outclassed in every way by the enemy infantry. The good news though is we have completely decimated the Luftwaffe. We have green air and we are in total control. I guess I'll try my luck against the uh, southern half of the line, try and cut across here. But again, seven divisions stacked on a tile and I can only advance across a river and none of my generals have improv experts. So now it is winter. So looking at these debuffs, snow and snowing, these are not ideal to wage offensives in. Of course, if you have a massive advantage, feel free to start pushing and keep pushing we don't we're still trying to pick away at the german troops so i'm gonna take a little breather let my tank units recover a little bit because oh god i threw away a lot of tanks and pointless offensives and there we go we have reconvened the zemsky sobor and the czar is returned vladimir the third will now lead glorious Russia with its new lovely green color and a lovely new flag. Okay, there we go, Vladimir. You've got a war to win though, so let's see what we still need for the achievement. Well, we control Ankara and we have a Tsar. That is about it. We still need Sofia, Northern Hungary, Lower Austria, Bohemia and Brandenburg. In terms of focuses at this point, it doesn't really matter. I'd like to see what we can pick up under the Romanov Reconstruction branch or you can dismantle the Zemsky Sobor and go full brown shirt if you like. I'm not interested in that. Instead, let's uh, let's dick around a bit in the focus tree, see what else we can drag up that's pretty good. Glorious, we've got a supply hub. We can keep the offensive rolling. Now, the terrain is still garbage though, so be careful. Now we have that glorious cast damage working for us. So yeah, current build of the game, Cass is king, boys. Cass is king. Let's see if we can get a little encirclement off here to the north. Tanks are still fast, so it should be possible. Terrain isn't the best though. Ah, they're funneling in troops from these two tiles. I can't stop them. And again, I had... Oh, never mind. We got a breakthrough. Good. Now, just to make sure they don't get out. Ah, oh, feels good to crush them, Germans. Feels good. Germans really don't want me to cut their lines here in Dnipropetrovsk. They've got two railway guns here, and they're just funneling everything in range just into this single battle. And again, I'm going to say it. AI is much, much better than it was, and I hate it. Oh, they're annoying. They're funneling troops from all over the front into this single province just to stop me. Impressive that the AI can think of that. Annoying that it does. Time to snake our way to Memel. And if not Memel, we'll still try to encircle the front here. Should be possible. My units are fast enough. Eh, got him. At this point, Germany is clearly on the defensive. It's just a matter of time. Oh yeah, German lines looking real thin right now. Except for here, somehow they've really stacked the Dnipropetrovsk. I wonder where all their troops are. Maybe they're dealing with these naval invasions. And just like in the Russian Civil War, just keep your offensives rolling. Take the railway, you control the railway, you control the supply. And little by little, we are tightening the noose around the German army. Once you survive the initial onslaught, it's just a matter of figuring out what works and what doesn't in terms of offensives, and you should be good. I found out that Cass is 
really, really good. And with casts and tanks, I'm smashing my way through the German lines and working my way towards a few nice encirclements. And with that, we can close the noose around the German army group center. That is the first pocket of the game. First decent pocket of the game. Good. And if I can cut south here towards the Black Sea, I'll cut off that Romanian Italian monstrosity as well. Now you'll notice the AI will aggressively try and break massive encirclements like that. They will start hammering the weakest point of the encirclement and at that point it becomes very very important that you defend your flanks so i've just uh, smashed my armor into the thinnest part of our line uh, just to keep the line open but if you don't you very much risk the ai breaking out they will actively try for that all right, let's make a quick dash to Odessa. And with that, we'll be able to cut this entire section of the line off. And it's done. We've cut the entire, what is this? Uh, Bulgarian Vichy French army off. So that is another pocket crushed. And those divisions are gone. And these will soon be gone as well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Annoyingly, the UK... Looks like it might actually get its hands on Sofia. Maybe I should be rushing towards the Triple Entente. Uh, if I can do that, maybe I can get the UK to give me Sofia. I'm gonna make a thrust here and see if I can actually get to Sofia before the UK does. I doubt it, but we can try. And if that doesn't work, we can always just uh, try and join the allies through the Triple Entente focus. Oh, thanks, sir. Sure going. No, nope, meeting a lot of resistance here. Okay, um, I'm a little concerned with how easy this is. I don't think it should be this easy. <laughs> Where's the army? AI? I'm actually about to just drive into Sofia with nothing but an order. Not even micromanaging it. It does help that we killed 4.4 million Germans already. Oh, well, we've taken Sofia, so what does that say about the achievement? All right, just Hungary, Austria, Bohemia and Brandenburg left to go. Should be easy. I think I could just set my units to uh, march and they'll just walk into Germany. I don't think their lines are all that uh, uh, robust anymore. But let's stay a little conservative. Just do damage where we can and uh, stay smart, right? S stay clever. And there goes Bulgaria, all right? This is a lot of Axis divisions just completely trapped in the Greek mountains. Again, if it looks like the allies are going to be taking stuff that you want, you can always try to join their faction through the Focus Reforged the Triple Entente. It is a little bit buggy because of the way World Tension makes the UK kick you out of their faction, but it should be enough to allow you to ask for at least one state, maybe even two, considering you have contributed significantly. Oh, we are so outstripping our supply lines, though. <laughs> and we've taken Budapest. There goes Greater Hungary. Oh, God, it's disgusting. Oh, fun fact. We've managed to capture railway artillery. Didn't didn't know that. Didn't see that. Eisenbahn Batterie 690? 90? Hey, we've made it to Vienna. Okay, that's good. I can actually just truck into Prague as well. Uh, yeah, German lines are so overextended. They are just... Oh my god, France is back. So yeah, we are in Prague. And all I have to do now is drive straight to Berlin. And technically, I'd have everything. Yeah, I just need Berlin. Oh, and they told me snaking wouldn't work. Now it is taking its toll on my army, I, uh, I must admit. But I think it's worth it. It feels like it's worth it. And we're in Berlin. The Romanovs' last laugh achieved the fascist lair is ours. Hurrah, there goes the Reich. Now we're gonna keep this going until the peace conference, but so far, well, that is one achievement achieved. Oh, look at that. I've cut Germany in half and I've pretty much encircled whatever's left of their army now. Well, they got some ports, but uh, yeah, I don't think they'll be able to do much. Not if I also send out my navy and do some convoy raiding in the lower Baltic Sea. So at the cost of about 5.6 million Germans, 1.9 million Italians, and a variety of smaller nations, we've achieved 36% participation. And we've lost a million Russian sons. 
We've got our achievement and we are about to crush whatever's left of Germany. Italy is also on its way out. I don't foresee them holding on to much down there. Oh, this is cool. I hadn't noticed this before. Uh, this is really nice. If you are rushing towards Berlin, you have the Germans on the back foot. You can click this button and give yourself a nice juicy bonus to fight Germany because you are trying to race the Allies towards Berlin. It's a little late now. It's, uh, it's a little late. Yeah, it's a little late, but still nice touch. We, we don't need it, though. And there goes the peace deal. We should have enough to be able to take a couple of things first. If at this point you don't control the territory, you can do it now. All you need is Brandenburg, Bohemia, Lower Austria, Northern Hungary, and down here, Sofia. If you have those states, you are set. You are golden because all of the other stuff is already yours. That's it. That's all you need for the achievement. Now, we've already got the achievement this run, so I'd like to make some clean borders. Okay, so we've got an absolutely disgusting peace deal out of this. We've got a long Hungary here, along with a sad Bohemia. Got a German Empire as our puppet. I don't know who you are, but you're not the Emperor. Got the Kingdom of Italy here, so Vittorio Emanuel is uh, back in town. And we, um, we, we don't talk about the rest of the map. Oh god, Britain finally, <laughs> finally settled the Hundred Years' War, it seems. So, yeah. That is one way to get yourself the Romanov's Last Laugh achievement. Now, I do intend to refine these videos as the meta gets more and more detailed. Like I said before and several times during the video, I'm still trying to figure things out. But if you like this video, leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. Anyway, this has been me, Bittersteel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.